Jim Bowers back at you on Demon Seed here at YouTube. Hey, I just want to give you just a quick start guide to unpacking and flying your uh, Phantom 2 Vision Plus. If you're looking at getting it out of the box and getting it into the air as quickly as possible, these are the things you need to do in order to get that done, okay? First of all, you'll get a bunch of paperwork and all kinds of manuals and everything with your Phantom. The first ones you can get rid of are all these ones in a different language. So there's French and Chinese and Spanish and all that sort of thing. So unless you speak it, just chuck them in the trash. The other thing you want to look for is the quick start guide. That's this red folder right here. Look for the quick start guide. That'll get you into the air very quickly. Okay, right out of the box, the Phantom comes without props on it. So it's going to have these little paper things on there. Just pop them all off and throw them in the trash. You don't need them. Now, when you put your props on, you're going to have two kinds of props. You're going to have a silver nut prop and a black nut prop. The silver nut props are your clockwise, or excuse me, your counterclockwise rotating propellers. The black props are clockwise rotating propellers. So to put your props on and to figure out what direction they go in, just look down here and it shows the direction that the prop needs to spin, okay? So this prop, for instance, goes here because I can tell by the pitch of the prop that it needs to turn in that direction. So just look at the little symbol and find the prop that's going to turn in that direction. And then set the prop down over the top of the, of the bolt and just give it a spin. And when you spin it, it's going to tighten up almost all the way. And in order to tighten it down the rest of the way, you just use this little included wrench that comes with your Phantom. Take that wrench and put it over the top of one of the sprockets that's on your motor. And then grab a hold of the prop and just twist the prop in the direction that will tighten it down. So in this case, we're going to turn the prop counterclockwise. When we turn these, we'll put the wrench on and spin them in a clockwise rotation in order to tighten them down. And you only need to hand tighten it. Just give it a twist with your hand and make it snug. It doesn't have to be on there like a, you know, like a nut or something where it's torqued down. It just needs to be snug and on there pretty tight and you'll be good to go. The next thing you want to do is on your radio. The first thing is, is this clamp here is going to be folded over backwards. I installed mine this way to bring the cam or the iPhone, the cell phone up as close as I could to me because cell phones are pretty hard to see in the sun already. So I want the phone to be right in my face. So I mounted the bracket to the back bar of the, of the radio. Your Wi-Fi extender, that's what this is, your Wi-Fi extender. It extends the range on your video out to about 2,600 feet. And without it, you're only gonna get about 600 feet. So the Phantom Vision Plus comes equipped with this you're going to need to charge it. So break out the cable that came with your Phantom. It's a USB to a uh, USB 2 connector here. And plug that in there and then plug it into your computer or into a wall socket that's got the, you know, your own little uh, uh, brick and uh, charge this up. When you charge it, you'll see uh, power on and then the system will go green when it's fully charged. On the radio itself, you want to install four AA batteries into the compartment in the back right there. Make sure they're good AA batteries. Don't install heavy duty whatever. They have to be alkaline batteries. Put four of them in there. Make sure you put them in the right direction. I noticed on the new Vision Plus, the switches here they don't come marked GPS, ATTI, ATTI. It just says S1 or switch one. If you're in the top position, you're in GPS mode. If you're in the second click, you're in ATTI mode. If you're in the third click, you're also in ATTI mode unless you've set it up in the NASA software 
to either be in manual mode or in the failsafe return to home mode, okay? Just remember that out of the box, it's going to come as GPS, ATTI, ATTI. Over here on the left side, we have the IOC switch. The IOC or the S2 switch starts out in off or home lock or course lock. When you first start flying, make sure this is in the off position. Off means you're not going to accidentally fly in the home lock or course lock position, which you do not want to do if you're a novice flyer. So your radio's all ready to go when you've got batteries in your radio. Your wireless extender is fully charged. You've got your bracket turned around the right direction and ready to mount your cell phone to. And your switches are in the up position. Turn your antenna at about a 45 degree angle. When you turn your radio on, the light should go constant green. So just look for that and your radio is ready to fly. The next thing you want to do is charge your batteries. Whether you got one battery or two batteries with your Phantom, you're going to want to charge them fully because they only come about 30% charged from the factory. And that's what it looks like with the battery connected. This battery is fully charged so I'm not getting any lights on the front of it. When your battery is charging though, you'll get four LED lights that will light up across the front here. If it's only 25% charged, only the first LED will light up. Once it becomes 50% charged, the second one will light up, 75% charged, you'll have three bars, and when it's fully charged, you'll have all four LED lights lit up on the front, and you're ready to fly it. You can always check to make sure that your battery is fully charged just by pushing the button, and it'll show you how much charge there is on the battery. The next thing that you want to do before you fly is remove this plastic safety cover that's protecting your camera. There's the plastic safety cover and the lens cap. Pull the lens cap off. There we go. Lens cap off. And then it says right on there, unlock. So just slide that to the right and that will come off. You notice we've got a remove before flight little uh, flag on ours. You can order these on Amazon.com and if you hook it up to your plastic safety cover then you'll always have a reminder to remove that before you activate your Phantom. You don't want this in place when you plug your battery in because when the camera gimbal initializes it's going to try to straighten out and if that safety covers on there it's fighting against it. So always remove the safety cover, the safety bracket, before you power on your Phantom. It never hurts to clean your lens before every flight. There's nothing worse than flying, recording a bunch of video, and then when you look at it, it's all cloudy because there's a big fingerprint right in the middle of your camera. So just use a soft cotton cloth or even your t-shirt and clean off the front of your lens before you take off. Remember when you're flying, which is the front and which is the back of your aircraft. The front is the side that's got the red stripes on it. When you're on the ground flying though, those are almost impossible to see. So the bottom of the Phantom has these LED lights all the way around. Those LED lights will always be green toward the back of the aircraft. Why DJI decided to put green in the back, I have no idea. Having a clue. I thought they should put red LEDs in the back like brake lights and green out in the front like go that way lights. But they're green in the back, so don't become disoriented. Always remember your green LEDs are toward the back of the aircraft. Now these that you see on the bottom of the Phantom landing gear don't come with the Phantom. These are my exclusive landing gear skids. They're made out of Lexan and they help to keep your Phantom from tipping over when it lands. Phantoms are notorious for tipping backwards and forwards onto their propellers when you come in for landing. These landing gear skids almost eliminate that entirely. 
because they give it a much better footing when it comes down on the ground. You'll notice that the front of the landing gear skids are only about an inch and a quarter long. The back is about two inches long. The reason we engineered them this way is so that your camera doesn't see the landing gear legs in the front when your camera is panning or pitching downward. So these are a little bit shorter. You'll never see these show up in your shot unless you're in a real strong wind where the Phantom is pitching sideways. Sometimes they'll peek into the shot, but you can always crop them out. Anyway, the landing gear skids are a great modification for your Phantom 1, the 1.1, the Phantom 2, the Phantom 2 Vision, and the Vision Plus. We make them for all of them. So send me an email to jimbowers at foothill.net and I'll set you up with PayPal. They're $20 plus $6 shipping in the U.S. or $12 shipping international. All right, we're all ready to go and it's time to fly. But before you can fly your Phantom, you've got to calibrate the compass. Remember, this Phantom came from, I don't know where they ship it from, but it's calibrated for there. Anytime your Phantom moves more than, let's say, 30 miles from your home or where it's been calibrated, you should always recalibrate the compass. The first thing you do in order to calibrate your compass is turn your radio on. Once your radio is on, then you plug in your battery. Once your battery is in, the Phantom is going to initialize. You can tell it's initialized by watching your LEDs underneath. The LEDs in the back are going to flash green. So the next step is go back to your radio and take your GPS switch in the top right corner and switch it six times. Just go six times, one, two, three, four, five, six. When you do that, this LED light on the bottom is going to switch from green to yellow, and it's going to be a yellow LED. That means the Phantom has entered into a compass calibration mode. Once it's there, take your Phantom and just turn it 360 degrees flat on its axis or on a surface. Once you've gone around all 360 degrees, that LED light will light up green again. So after you've done that, then turn it nose down. Nose down, nose down means the camera is facing downward. The battery is upward. So turn it battery facing up and then just walk around in a circle 360 degrees again. Once you've gone all the way around, that LED light will light up green again. I'm not going to actually recalibrate mine here because I've already calibrated and it's absolutely dead on perfect. If for some reason the LED does not go green and it's flashing yellow, it didn't take the compass calibration and you need to do those steps all over again. Flip the switch six times, turn it around flat, turn it around nose down and see if you get a green light. If you do that over and over again, let's say three or four times, and you cannot get the compass to calibrate, you may have to do an advanced compass calibration. I call it a compass wipe. Just take any small magnet. Take the magnet, go down here to the compass, right here on the leg, you'll see the compass. Take that magnet and run it over the surface of the magnet. Do it once on the front, once on the back. Just swirl it around on there. Once you've done that, then go back, flick your switch six times again, take your Phantom, turn it around again, turn it up nose first, nose down, go around in a circle, recalibrate it again, you should be good to go. Now, I'm sure that some of you, if not all of you, have heard about the notorious flyaway. There's rumors out there that the Phantom Vision Plus has a tendency to fly away. That has not been my experience. I've flown three different Vision Pluses now in the last month, and not one of them has had a single issue at all. They were absolutely rock solid, dead on, compass, flight stability, everything. They were just terrific. 
So all I can tell you is do not worry about a flyaway. If all you're ever doing is worrying about a flyaway, you're not going to have any fun flying your vision. So just fly it. I can honestly tell you that the chances of a flyaway are probably one in 5,000. I have no idea what the number is, but it's some outrageous amount. When you hear about flyaways, the majority of those flyaways are due to some kind of pilot error. The pilot made some kind of a mistake. Either he got disoriented, thought he was coming toward himself when actually he was flying away from himself. That freaked him out and he thought he was having a flyaway. So there are different causes and effects for a flyaway condition. Most of the time, you've just done something wrong. There are cases where actual flyaways have occurred. And for those, there's really no science out there. There's no solution as to how to solve it. It's an internal glitch that goes wrong with the motherboard or the flight controller. The Phantom just gets a mind of its own and it just takes off. And there's nothing you can do about it. Hopefully, it runs into something or uh, it uh, runs out of battery power and auto lands itself or something. Chances are even in a flyaway, you're gonna be able to get it back. There's very few cases out there where the Phantom is just not recoverable. Make sure you have an SD card installed in your uh, camera. This camera will take up to a 32 gigabyte SD card. Try to use an SD card that has a 10x write speed. As far as modifications goes, the one thing that I would recommend to all novices is get a set of prop guards. And there's a couple of reasons why you should use prop guards. One, a prop guard's not going to cut your flight time by more than about a minute. They're very, very lightweight. They don't affect your, you know, there's, there's controversy out there as to whether they create adverse prop wash or not. I don't think that they really have that great an effect on it. But there are so many advantages for using prop guards, I recommend them. They help you from bumping into things. You can come up and clip a tree branch and glance off of that tree branch. You can run into the kid down the street totally by accident and not cut his jugular vein with the propeller. There's a lot of advantages to the prop guards. So I recommend them. Now here's the main reason I really like prop guards. If you take your Phantom, here's the front, you've got your red stripes. The prop guards that go on the front of the Phantom, paint them yellow or paint them bright red. Any color that has a high contrast to the back prop guards. Paint these a different color and it helps you with orientation. When you're flying, and you look up and see these bright yellow prop guards in the sky, you immediately know where the front of the aircraft is. So especially for novices, when you're first learning to fly and you're going to have a problem with orientation, I guarantee it, having yellow prop guards on the front of your Phantom is just going to reduce the likelihood that you're going to crash and burn. Okay, so once you've done all of those things, you've got your prop guards on, you've got your battery in, you've got your green light turned on, you're ready to launch your Phantom. Here's what you do. You take your sticks and pull them down and to the center. And what that's going to do is it's going to activate your props. It's going to put them in a on or idle mode. They're going to be at about 50% power in the idle position. So your stick is at 50%. In order to take off, you will take that stick, your throttle stick, and go full forward. Go all the way forward until your Phantom lifts off the ground about 10 to 25 feet, and then let it come back into the center position where the Phantom will hover. And that's all we're going to cover in this video. If you'd like to watch my video on flying the Phantom as a novice, go to my YouTube channel at Demon Seed and look for Phantom Novice. 
That'll show you how to fly your Phantom for the first time safely without crashing it. Now you'll notice that I didn't upgrade the firmware on my Phantom before I started flying it. I'm waiting a little bit because the jury is still out as to whether the new firmware upgrade is really the right way to go. So I'm watching the forums and all the talk out there as to flyaways and problems and all that sort of thing. For right now, my Phantom is flying just terrific. So I'm not worried about the firmware upgrade. I'm just going to fly it until I feel like I'm more comfortable with it and I want to move up and, uh, and plug in my Phantom to my Mac computer or your PC and uh, uh, download the NASA software from DJI and go in and update the firmware, turn on the IOC switches, which is your home lock and your course lock, and activate my manual mode so I have that as a fail safe. Just in case I do get a flyaway, I want to have manual mode activated on my Phantom so I can switch quickly into manual mode, regain control of the aircraft, and then switch back into GPS or ATTI. Here's a very important quick tip for you. When you're flying your Phantom and you've activated your camera, in other words, you're recording, make sure you turn your camera off before you land and turn off your Phantom. If you land and turn off your Phantom before you've shut off your camera, you're going to corrupt the SD card information on the camera. So you're not going to be able to get any video off of your card because the card will be corrupted. Make sure you have plenty of extra batteries. You want to pick up AA alkaline only batteries. Some people like to fly with a lanyard. So you would hook the lanyard to the center clip here and put it around your neck so your hands are basically free and the radio just hangs around your neck. The next thing you want to do is, this is optional but I think it's really cool. This remove before flight tag it's made of cotton and it's embroidered and everything and it comes with a ring on it and you order it from Amazon.com just look for remove before flight uh, pennant or, or flag and it was only like three dollars for this put it on this uh, safety cover and you'll always remember to take the safety cover off of your camera before you power up your Phantom Phantom batteries. You can never have enough Phantom batteries. Get the Phantom batteries from bhphotovideo.com. Right now, there's a sale going on $129 for this Phantom battery, and they're normally about $160. So get extra batteries, okay? There is a battery that's available from banggood.com. It's B A N G G O O D.com. They're selling a knockoff battery for 89 bucks. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to see if that battery works. It's supposed to. It got good reviews on their website. The jury's still out until I test it. But that's at banggood.com for 89 bucks. One thing you'll always need more of is extra props. Get only the vision props with the black and the silver nut on the inside and do not buy carbon fiber props do not buy knockoff DJI props these propellers are engineered for the Phantom Vision Plus they have the best flight characteristic they have the least amount of vibration and jello they are fragile all Phantom Vision props are very fragile so you're going to need extra ones especially if you don't have the tip over skids that I had on this one. Those tip over skids are going to save your props a lot of times. So extra props. I recommend you get four packs of these. There's two in a pack. Get four packs if not eight. They're about fifteen dollars per pair. Prop guards. If you're a novice and you're not flying with prop guards I will personally come over and kick your ass. Prop guards are a necessity for phantom novices learn how to fly first with your prop guards and then if you want to start hot dogging later you can take them off I do want to remind you when you're putting the prop guards on you'll put long screws into the motor mounts underneath your Phantom 
Remember, when you take these prop guards off, switch back to the short screws. If you do not switch back to those short screws and you use the same long screws to put back in the bottom of your Phantom, you're going to destroy the motor. The motor windings are going to hit those screws and destroy them. You'll have four motors to replace. So make sure you switch back to the short screws if you take your prop guards off. The last thing you might consider is a flight case. I'm doing a lot of traveling with my Phantom, so I ordered this uh, aluminum flight case. If you get a flight case, make sure that it's not more than nine inches thick. In other words, that is not more than nine inches. Because if you travel with your Phantom, it has to fit in the template for the overhead compartment. If it doesn't, they're gonna make you check it through. And I would much rather carry my Phantom on than check it, okay? The last thing you're gonna need is a Puggle. This is Max, and he is a purebred Beagle and Pug mix, and he's just absolutely my favorite friend in the whole world. Say hello, Max. All right, buddy. Hey. That's it for another YouTube video, gang. I hope you got some good tips and tricks out of this. My name is Jim Bowers. Don't forget to subscribe for a lot more Phantom 1, Phantom 2, Phantom 2 Vision Plus videos in the future. All right, have a great day.